Thank you. The oldest first. I mean the youngest first. Oh, come on, come on. You gave up, you gave away on this thing. <laughs> God, you bless her. And bless her birthday. Lord, these times we were living in, we don't take no day for granted. Every morning we wake up, we're thankful for it. And every night we go to bed, we're grateful again. God, the year that she's fixing to go into a new year, Lord, keep her, establish her and her family in a good, quiet place where they can be kept during these times. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. God bless you. The next one is. God, you bless her and keep her and give her back the nourishment and strength from giving birth to this precious little life. Well, I know it takes a lot out of a mother during those nine months and to be able to deliver. So restore back all of that that needs to be restored in her physical life and bless her home and bless this child also. Let this be a good year for her and for her household and her husband. In Jesus' name, thank you, Lord. God bless you. Thank you. You're the next oldest. You over there? Yet? Oh, okay. God, you're blessed. And continue to keep her, Lord, her and her sisters and her brother. Been such a blessing. Singing along with their mother and their father. God continue to watch over them. Keep her husband stirred. God place them, Lord, in that place where they can, the word can flow like rivers out of them. Both of them have the hand of God in their lives. Bless their birthday. Bless and keep her in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. You got a birthday too? Huh? Okay. Okay, God, you bless his mother. And give her health and strength in her physical body. And God, drive away whatever it is that she's been battling with. In Jesus' name. Thank you for it. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, sir. Birthday. How old are you? 14. That's good. My uh, great granddaughter, she just turned 13. Yesterday, I think. My uh, God, you bless his birthday. Come up a little closer. Bless his birthday. Keep these young ones. There's so much temptation out there. So much youthful lust out there. But God, keep these young ones from all of these snares and entrapments of the enemy. And I'm asking you to bless his birthday in a special way. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. What's your name? James. Okay. Good name. Yes, sir. Lord, you bless this senior year. Yes. Good. Yes, can I? Hold it. Bless this senior year. I come up a little close. I remember my senior year. It got scary because I know I had to face this big old world out here. But I'm glad I was serving you. I'm glad, Lord, you come into my life while I was still in high school and directed me from that time to now. And I never look back and regret serving you from being a teenager. And I never let him look back, but God ordered his steps and protected him 
Mold and make yourself in it. Let him be an example and a witness to others. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. You get your car yet? Working on it. Let me pray for you. God, be helping you get a good car. I hadn't forgotten about you. Just. God, help him to get a good car. Protect his family. Work out his financial situations and his struggles. Lord, help him to find something that's dependable, reliable. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Congratulations. What's her name? Zariah. I like that name. I got a great granddaughter named Zariah. Sure do. Amen. Got one named Sariah too. You come on Christmas and you might see him, Jonathan. He might bring him on Christmas. <laughs> I get over that boy. We raised Jonathan in church. And uh, I want to see him raise his beautiful daughters and his handsome little son. I want to see him raise them. How many of y'all want to see young children and grandchildren and families raised in church? It's a dangerous out there, man. Dangerous in this whole world. Don't forget to be here with us tonight. And appreciate Brother Chuck. He's got a ministry, a great word in him. And I told him, I said, Brother Chuck, I appreciate you always there on standby. You know, at times, yeah. you know, and I appreciate uh, his uh, faithfulness down through the years. Yes. And keep my daughter in your prayers. She's missing her mommy. <laughs> Not as much as I miss her. But God's grace is sufficient to help us all through these uh, times that we everybody have to go through these valleys but he said he's the lily of the valley lily the, the bright and morning star the sweet rose of Sharon hallelujah I'm so glad we have a savior we have relationships but Jesus will always be there won't he Daddy won't always be there. Mama won't always be there. Somebody said, what? Because we all have to cross this bridge one day. And uh, other family members won't always. But Jesus, he said, no, I'm with you always. Even to the end of the world. And uh, you can count on that. Can't you? But these ones that he's preparing them and taking them home, you know, we stay faithful. We'll see them again. And then that would be an eternal relationship, not temporal. Is that right? Uh, I want to uh, talk to you here. You know, the word sometimes it gets kind of heavy, but I like to go a lot of times in these epistles because that's where the foundation, we get our meat, we get anchored, and we have to get in these epistles because we're faced with so many uh, uncertainties 
in life right now. And I want to read from Colossians chapter 1. And uh, who's going to help me read? Colossians 1 and verse 7. As you all. Yeah, go ahead. Colossians 1 and verse, excuse me, verse 23. If you continue in the faith, grounded and settled, and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel. I want you to notice that if you continue in the faith. I know a lot of uh, teachings is going on that once saved, always saved. But that is not the Bible. That is not true. He, he that endure to the end, the same shall be saved. And he's telling us, if, if you continue in the faith, uh huh, grounded and settled, grounded and settled, yes, and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel, and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel, which ye have heard, which you have heard. And which was preached to every creature which uh, is under heaven. Thank God. Yes. Whereof I call and made a minister. See, God wants us to continue grounded and what? Seven. seven. Chapter 2, verse 7 of the same chapter, same book. Verse 7. As you have, verse 6 says, As you have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk you in him. Look at verse 7. Rooted and built up in him. Not only grounded and settled, but get roots in him. Yes. And then build yourself up in him. People rooted in the world, rooted yeah. in drugs. They got the roots of the devil. And bam, can't get free. Rooted, drug, alcoholism, perversion, and all kinds of things have taken root inside of people. That is bringing forth the very, um, evil that we are faced with today. Too many people rooted in false religion. Rooted. And you can't tell people no difference in, in, in politics that's not according to the word of God. Rooted in a lot of things that's got their minds twisted, messed up. One thing. But I'm glad, I'm glad somebody got uprooted this week. I'm glad Cheney's daughter got uprooted this week. <laughs> That's what. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. As, as you have therefore received Christ Jesus, the Lord, so walk in him, rooted and built up in him, and what? Established in the faith as ye have been taught, abiding, abounding, wherein with thanksgiving. Be well, lest any man should spoil you through philosophy, vain deceit. Oh no. Well, just read on down to verse 10. Who, who's reading? Beware be lest any man spoil you. Beware lest any man spoil you. Through philosophy uh -huh. and vain deceit. Yes. After the tradition of man, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. In him dwell all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Uh -huh. And ye are complete in him. You don't have to look nowhere else. Your completeness is in him. Which is in the head of all principalities. Don't have to look to no other religion or no other tradition or nothing else. 
Your complete salvation is in Him. Your complete strength and victory and wisdom and the ability to stand and, and overcome. So if we're going to be rooted, let's get rooted in something that has got the fullness of God. Jesus, the fullness of God is in Him. Get rooted, get grounded, get settled, get established in the one that has the fullness of God in it. Uh-huh. Verse 10. And you are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Yes. Bless this word. Strengthen this word. And that's what I want to talk with you a little bit on being rooted and established in the faith. Is that all right? You know, America right now and the world is experiencing what you call birth pains. I'm pretty sure me and this brother right here don't know about him, but I'm pretty sure his wife can, can uh, tell you something about birth pains. You know, women, my uh, granddaughter, she's uh, expecting in another what, four months, three months, five months, six, six months? Six months. It didn't go six months. Well, five. Five months, okay. <laughs> and already she's, you know, having the, um, probably a uh, bowels and a uh, bladder and a uh, lower back. And, and it'll tell you where all these symptoms is coming from. She come over to help me yesterday, and as soon as she come in the house, she just laid on the floor. <laughs> I said, you laying down, looking like you pregnant. <laughs> but don't pray for Laquilla. She's precious, and she's got a precious little life inside of her. Pray that God will bring her through this without any complications. Yes. But you know, right now, America and the world is experiencing birth pains. America and the world, that's right, is carrying, not a baby, but is carrying uh, the judgments of God, the end time, the prophecies of all these men of God that spoke about these last days. I wish America and the world was carrying this end time revival. But the kind of birth pains that right here that I'm going to talk to you about is the birth pains of the last days, the end of the world, the generation upon whom the end of the whole world has come upon. You listen? And it gives us some details in Matthew chapter 24, verse 6. Through verse 8, one of y'all will read that one from Matthew chapter 24. Oops. Who was that? Verse 6. Got it. Through verse 8. And ye shall hear of wars. And you shall hear of wars. And rumors of wars. That's what we're hearing of. See, that what he's saying right now is the birth pains, not the, the, not the full delivery. The full delivery is going to be uh, when. The great tribulations is upon the earth. Right now, we're just experiencing the birth pains of the last days. We're in the, Jesus brought in the beginning of the last days. Now we're in the last day of the last days. The tail end. In other words, there ain't going to be no more after this generation. We are the generation that's going to see the mark of the beast. We the generation that's going to see Joel's revival. We're the generation that's going to see the second coming of Christ. We are the generation that's going to see uh, 70 percent of what all these men prophesied about. Jeremiah, Isaiah, Amos, all of 70 percent of their prophecies were pertaining to the last generation. 
seven Jesus said, everything that's written is going to be fulfilled in this last generation that hadn't been fulfilled. Everything. So we got a lot to look forward to. Don't we? A, a, a great and a terrible day. But the birth pain is right here. Read that again. And you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. That's the beginning. Wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled. Uh huh. For all these things must come to pass. All these things must come to pass. But the end is not yet. But the end is not yet. For nations shall rise against nation. That's been happening for a long time. Now nations are, we've had World War One. We've had World War Two. We've had a uh, civil war where over um, a half million people, you know, died during that civil war in America. And now, you know, you, you have war pots boiling everywhere. As soon as people found out that Biden was president, Russia just went, went crazy, didn't it? Bombing crazy. And right now, they got those great big old massive nuclear plants that they're thinking might um, because they're in a war over there they might Russia might just bomb them just to blame Ukraine and mad because the rest of the world is trying to help the, the Ukrainians and we're dangerous that, I mean from that radiation can go out and millions upon millions, God said there was going to be a time when there was going to be one fourth of the whole world population would be destroyed. Then he said there was going to be a time one third of the world's population. Can you imagine? One fourth out of close to nine billion people. That's one fourth of nine billion people. Man, that's what? How many billions? Two billion? Two point. Uh, that's a lot of people. And all of this, and China right now is thinking about going into, and, and, and well, America is at a weak position. And China knows it. That great dragon in the Bible, China, and that great bear. Oh, and in the book of, I, I believe I was reading about that this morning, Daniel, coming, rising up. So we're on a powder keg right now. The whole world is. And all of this is just the birth pains of what's to be delivered. The birth pains of what all this neglecting God, turning away from God, has impregnated us with the wrath and the anger and the judgments of God and, 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 and the world is pregnated with all of these they fix to give birth to trouble times the wicked shall be turned into hell and all nations that forget God that's what I'm saying finish reading that Matthew 24 and verse uh, 6 through 8 please for nation shall rise against nation. Nation shall rise against nation. And kingdom against kingdom. Kingdom against kingdom. And there should be famine. Famine, and that's what we're on the verge of right now. Famine. God been warning us, warning us, but now the reality of it is setting in. Famine. Stores, shells, emptying out. Man, I tell you, when it really uh, hit home, people are going to panic. And people are going to kill for food. People are going to break in your houses just to get something to eat. Yeah. Then it ain't that far. Go ahead. And pestilences. And we're already experiencing pestilence. See, we think we uh, get over something that started back in 2019 in December. Uh, this current, uh, uh, COVID. And when you say peace and safety, then something comes up out of it again. Amen. And it's going to, the process is going to repeat itself. It's going to continually, when we think everything is 
all right. Well, I can just, you know, I can go back on in the clubs. I can go and do my thing. No, no. When people think that it's settling down, he said, when they say peace and safety, then sudden destruction. See, it's going to increase the uh, intensity of these plagues. It's going to increase. Now they got those monkey pumps. All of it just evolving. One evolving from another. And now, you know, people are experiencing symptoms of, of this. Now they got seven or eight different uh, names now. And people sick at work. People sick at home. School, school's finished starting back. And there is a curse on, it's in the atmosphere. It's on the face of the whole earth. This is why I preach, and I'm going to finish, I preach Tuesday on building up a wall, a hedge. Now that Job had a hedge around him. We're going to have to have a hedge built up around us. I'm not talking about bushes. I'm not talking about plants. I'm talking about a spiritual defense. A spiritual hedge. Something that is invisible to the natural eye, but the devil can detect it. Well, germs and diseases and evil spirits coming out of hell can detect it. We need that hedge around us. The Bible speaks about a wall of fire. And God wants to put a wall of fire around us so that that fire can purge any germs, any viruses, anything can be purged out. Amen. I remember God telling us when we are going to be invaded that even the enemies was going to be blinded to these areas that God has chosen for his people to live. These blessed animals. Yeah. That the enemy was going to be blinded to them. And they was going to, somebody said, is that Bible? Yes. You never read in the Bible where Jesus walked right through the crowd and they didn't even recognize him? Huh? Walked right through him. <laughs> they were mad, wanted to kill him, wanted to stone him. But he walked right through him and they didn't even recognize him. See that wall, that hedge. And that's what God's going to do. Supernaturally. He's going to put a hedge around those that are here. The Lord knows them that are here. And let everyone that name of the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Do we uh, finish reading that? In earthquakes in diverse places. Earthquakes. See, God said that's going to be a season of earthquakes. We're going to have a season of earthquakes. That's actually hit us. That means globally. That means not just in one place, but it's going to be hit all, all over different nations. But right here in America, there's earth faults. There's fiction to be on. Um, that the plates is fixing to be disturbed. God fixing to send his angels. And they fixing to uh, disturb these plates underneath the earth. One big one right there in California. All the way to the Yucatan through Alaska. All the way down to Canada. All the way into Oregon. Down California. In New Mexico. Down Central America. Down South America. From the top to the bottom of that west coast, there is an earth fault. And there is a, another one, earth fault, right in the center. Right over here in Missouri, in the eastern part, going to Mississippi. Going to cause the Mississippi to go backwards. And that's, that's another earth fault. That's fiction to wrap, that's fiction to hit. The central part of America. And there's another one that's fixing to hit on the, well, 
Two of them fixed it on the East Coast, north of that New York City, Washington, the whole state, White House, fixed to be rocked all the way down into Florida. And the one down in Florida going to uh, cause the uh, coast of Florida to break off. It's like part of California going to break off into the Pacific. Parts of the uh, 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 Florida is going to break off into the Atlantic. America is going to be split in three different places. Going to be split. See, this is the big... But, but right now, he said, see, when all that happens, it's going to let us know that the end is upon us. What's happening now is the beginning of these things that I'm telling you about. We're just in the beginning. It's going to intensify. When they say peace and safety, earthquakes going to intensify. When they say peace and safety, Tornadoes, floods, and all these, and all these um, pestilence, plagues, going to intensify. Somebody says, oh, you ain't nothing but bad news. I don't know why I listen to you sometimes. It's not me, it's reality. It's, uh, turn the news on if you ain't afraid of, to hear what they're saying. They do everything they can on a lot of these uh, fake news channels to try to give you something simple and try not to give you the bad news. But uh, you listen to some of these, uh, like uh, Fox News and what's the name of one of them other channels? Newsmax. Man, I don't waste my time with some of these news channels. I don't waste my time with ABC, CBS, NBC, MSN. Because I know that they're propaganda for the Repub for the Democrats. They are. That's why like even the FBI them sold out for the Democrats. Even the Democrats them sold out for socialism and communism. When I say Democrats, I'm talking about there ain't no such thing as a Democrat party anymore. It's a socialist. It's communism. Hiring 87,000. FBI, I mean 87,000 people to come in and to take um, 100 and, how, how much money they said has been scammed, scammed 183 billion dollars. They only have been able to recover 1 billion. Government just gets, just giving all this money out and 183 billion dollars they can't give an account for. It. So they're going to come out to you and I they go hire 80 some odd RRS to come after us. America is going down the road of no return. It's what Brother Joe saw many years ago. We're in the beginning of all these prophecies that we've been warned about for over a generation. We're in the beginning of these things being fulfilled now. The dam is burst. Just a matter of time before the walls cave in and before everything, like a flood, comes against us. There's just little cracks in it right now, but man is fiction to the, the is fiction to really get mad. For the world. I'm glad it ain't for us, but we in the world. <laughs> Father, I pray that you don't, that you keep them from the evil. Don't take them out, but keep them from the evil. Yes. Did we finish reading that? All these are the beginning of sorrow. All these are the beginning of birth pains. The beginning of the world coming to an end. The birth pains that's going to Bring this generation to an end. Uh huh. Then shall they deliver you up to oh, be afflicted. Well, we'll stop right there on that one, man. It just increasing, no man. <laughs> How many things was that? That was four major things that was just read to you 
that are the beginning of sorrows. What were they? Wars, rumors of wars, uh huh. Pestilence, famines, earthquakes. These are the birth pains that we are just beginning to feel. That's why it's time out being in and out of church, wishy washy, being up and down. Read Daniel chapter 12, verse 1 and 2, I mean, or verse 1. Did you read that through verse 8? I believe you finished that, didn't you? Oh, Daniel 12 and verse 1. Twelve and verse one. While uh, Sister is getting ready to read that one, brother uh, Chuck, you can go back to Matthew twenty-four. Your brother James, Matthew twenty-four and verse twenty-one through twenty-five. But okay, read that, Sister Tim. And at that time, at that time, shall Michael stand up? Shall Michael stand up? And the the great prince. The great prince. Standing for the children of our people. Yes. And there shall be a time of trouble. A time of trouble is upon the world right now. That's the birth pains that we are beginning to feel. A time of trouble. Such as never was since there was a nation. Such as never was since there was a nation. Even to that same time. Even to this same time. And at that time, at that time, thy people shall be delivered. God is promising us, and when trouble hits this world like it's never hit it, God said, at that time, thy people shall be delivered. God promising some salvation, some protection, some deliverance, and a time of trouble like the world has never seen. Thy people would be delivered. I'm going to hold on to that. Go ahead. Everyone that shall be found written in the book. Everyone that should be found written in the book. Ain't that something? Matthew 24. My well, brother Chuck is getting that one. Um, then uh, brother James and sister Tam, one y'all can get. First Thessalonians 5 and verse 1. Okay, brother Chuck. Matthew 24, verse 21 through 25. For then shall great tribulation. For then shall great tribulation. Such as was not since the beginning of the world. To yes. This time. Listen to since not begin since beginning of the world to this time. Great tribulation. See, this is what birth pains is going to give birth to. A time of great tribulation. Uh huh. No, nor ever shall be. Uh huh. And except those days should be shortened. Except those days should be shortened. God ain't going to short. That's going to be uh, a period of tribulation. Whether it's seven years or three and a half years. He's not going to shorten that. When you said those days should be shortened, you're talking about uh, he's going to, remember years ago, God said he's going to call, he's going to get a lot of people ready and take them home. Y'all remember that? Because he saw they weren't going to be able to go through all of the Things that we're fixing to have to go through that we are already in the beginning stages of going through and look around and see how many God have called home just from this local church and from Tulsa yes. yeah. look at how many God have called home yes. see days short talking about the days of the elect the people that he's going to get them ready and call them home because he knows physically they're not, God is not, God is exact and to the point and precise. He's not going to shorten them three and a half years of the Antichrist. Those three and a half years where the two witnesses are going to be on the face of the earth. He's not going to shorten. That's not what he's talking about. Go ahead. And except those days should be shortened. And except those days should be shortened. There should no flesh be saved. There should no flesh be saved. See, that's how bad it's going to get. Uh huh. But for the elect's sake. But for the see the elect is still here. People saying, "Ain't worried about it because I'm not going to be here. I'm going to be raptured out." Why is he saying for the elect's sake? Who are the elect? They are the chosen. They are the ones that are serving God. They are the ones that are presenting themselves to God 
as living sacrifices. The elect. Uh huh. But for the elect sake. But for the elect sake. Those days shall be short. Those days shall be short. For the elect sake. I don't want to lose them. Things going to get tough, difficult. And I, if I have to get them ready, I'll get them ready and I'll call them home. Because I see for well, many of them, not physically, are going to be able to endure all of this that fiction to be unleashed upon the earth. But for their sake, uh, go ahead. Then if any man shall say unto you, Then if any man shall say unto you, Lo, here is Christ, uh -huh. or there, believe it not. For there shall arise false Christs and false prophets, yes, Lord. and shall show great signs and wonders, insomuch that, if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. If it was possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Is it possible yeah. for the elect to be deceived? Yeah. Yes. Of course it is. If it wasn't possible, why did Jesus tell us to put on the whole arm of God? Why is he telling us to watch and pray? Why is he telling us different things in the Bible to help us to prepare for what's coming? Yes, it's possible for the elect to be deceived. Because it said many would fall away. Didn't he? told us that would be a, a great falling away. Yes. Yes. Man, it's going to get so tough until uh, people are going to betray one another. Yeah. You're going to hate one another. Mama going to betray their daughter. Daughter going to betray their mama. Husband. The, the wife. It's gonna, that's how bad it's going to get until many, many. This is also in the last days. Perilous times shall come. Men shall be lovers of themselves, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient, un unthankful, to, you know, without natural affection, heady, high-minded, truth breakers, lovers of pleasures, more than lovers of God. He said, this know also, the spirits speak expressly in the last days, many shall depart. Many shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing a religious spirit. And doctrines of devils. Go ahead, read that. Huh? Read the verse 25. Behold, I have told you before. I told you before. Wherefore, if they shall say unto you. Well, we'll stop with that. Let's go to 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 1 through 11. But of the times and the seasons, brethren. But of the times and seasons, brethren. Yeah. I, go ahead. Let's, let's read on through that whole chapter. Through, that, through verse 11. You have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. As a thief in the night. When people are unprepared. When they sleep. When they're unaware. When they're drunk. When they caught up with cares of life. As it was in the days of Noah. As it was in the days of, of Lot. Unaware. People are unaware of what is on the earth right now. People crossing their fingers. Thinking that they got more time. No. Remember last Saturday. When I preached on. Redeem the time. Yes. Because the days are evil. Take advantage of of what little time you have left to get close to God, to get your inner man built up, to get established in the faith, to get your altar back restored in your life, and wherever you call upon God, get yourself back in that place. Quit saying, I got to do this, and do it. Quit procrastinating and begin to become doers of the word, not just hearers only. Go ahead. For when they shall say peace and safety, uh -huh. then sudden destruction cometh upon them. Then sudden destruction is coming upon them. As travail upon a woman with child. Yes. And they shall not escape. And they shall not escape. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness. You're not in darkness. You know you've been taught these things. You know we have known and it's been 
These things have been spoken to us. Go ahead. That that day should overtake you as a thief. That the time that we have entered into, don't let it overtake you as a thief. You're unready, unprepared, you sleep. While you sleep, he's coming in your attic. He's coming in your back door. He's coming in your front door. He's just coming in as a thief. Uh-huh. You are all the children of light. You're all the children of light. You have light. You have knowledge. You have truth. You have prophecy. You have the prophets. You have the apostles. You have the revelation of Jesus Christ. Why are you sleeping? Uh huh. And the children of the day. And the children of the day. We are not of the night. We're not of them that are out there blind, not knowing what's happening in the world. Uh huh. Nor of darkness. Nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep. Therefore, don't sleep. As do others. Don't sleep. When you're, he's not talking about physical sleep. He's talking about sleeping spiritually. You're sleeping spiritually when you're not praying. You're sleeping spiritually when you're not getting close to God. You're sleeping spiritually when you're not aware of all these current events that's taking place in the world today. Go ahead. But let us watch and be sober. But let us what? Watch. Watch. Watch the alert. Watch, what's, watch these events that's taking place in the world. Let us watch and be sober. And be sober. Be responsible. Be don't, don't allow yourself to be drunken with all the curves of life. Don't allow yourself to be caught up with all this material things. God said be responsible. Be sober. Be alert. Be vigilant. Be watchful. Uh huh. But they that sleep, sleep in the night. They that sleep are sleep in the night. And they that be drunken are drunken in the night. And they that be drunken are drunken in the night. But let us who are of the day. Let us who are of the day. Be sober. Be sober. Putting on the breast. Be in self control. Be sober. Don't go out there drunken by all of these things. Go ahead. Putting on the breastplate of faith and love. Put on the breastplate of faith and love. Uh-huh. And for an helmet, the hope of salvation. Yes. The hope that you make it. Ain't no guarantee. The helmet, the hope of the hope. If you continue, you, you have that hope. If you be steadfast and unmovable and rooted and grounded and settled in the truth. Yes. Uh, you you know, you, you, you make it, but if you haphazardly and allow yourself to be up and down, in and out, you know, there ain't, ain't much hope for people that's not established. There's not much hope for people that's not rooted, that's not grounded. There's not much hope for people that will not get themselves on a solid foundation. The hope of salvation. Uh-huh. Go ahead, through verse 11. For God hath not appointed us to wrath. See, God hath not appointed us to wrath. But to obtain salvation. And that's something, you know, you hear people say, God ain't appointed us to wrath. Ha ha, we ain't got to worry about these things. God ain't appointed us to go through this. Yes. He hath not appointed us to wrath. This is God's wrath that he's fixing on. The birth pains that we're feeling is the beginning of God's wrath. God's wrath, not just warning, not just God trying to um, warn us, but actual, the actual execution of his word being carried out. Wrath is when, no more warning, but this is, this is it. This is it. No more uh, side stepping the issue. This is the fulfillment of Isaiah chapter 13. This is the fulfillment of Jeremiah. This is the fulfillment of all these different prophets. What I told you, 70% of what they prophesied has been reserved for the last days. 
70, I believe 70 percent of what Brother Terry prophesied has been reserved for this last day. Now we are seeing the birth pains of the of the 70 percent beginning to manifest itself. Go ahead. For God have not appointed us to wrath. God have not appointed us to wrath. But to obtain salvation by but, our Lord Jesus. But to obtain salvation. See, I'm saved. I ain't got to worry about it. I ain't got to worry about it. I'm going to be raptured out of here. I'm, I'm, I don't have to worry about it because I'm saved. Yeah, you're saved, but you got to keep your own garments. Remember that message? Keep your garments. Keep your uh, life unspotted. You got to not just get saved and just relax, but you're going to have to let every man get in here. He said in Luke 21 and verse 34 through 36, um, take heed to yourself. Lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with serpent and drunk and his present is life, that may come upon you. For as a snare shall it come on the face of the whole earth. Watch and pray that you might be counted worthy to escape and to stand before the Son of Man. Escape don't mean rapture. Escape means that you might be counted worthy to survive and to stand in the midst. The great day of his wrath has come. Who shall be able to stand? Them that are watching. Them that are sober. Them that are praying. Those that have put on the Lord Jesus Christ. Not making provision for the flesh. Who shall be able to stand? Those that have. Well, yes. we just read it. Finish reading that. Who died for us. Uh -huh. That whether we wake or sleep. Whether we wake or sleep. We should live together with him. Yes. Wherefore comfort yourselves together. And edify one another even as also ye do. See God said if you want to make it. You got to be watchful. You got to be sober. You've got to be praying. Huh? If we're going to make it. How many believe prayer. Is one of the most important things. That we need to be doing and establishing ourselves in right now. See, so if we're going to be being rooted and established in the faith, we've got to do a lot of praying. Jesus told the disciples, He said, Can you? He said, I'm finna enter into the darkest time of my life. He said, I'm finna go pray. He said, Pray with me that you don't enter into temptation. Peter said, I ain't worried about it. I'll follow you to the end of the world. You ain't got to worry about me betraying you. And Peter said, Jesus said, Peter, this night I'm telling you, before the cock crowed three times, you're going to be denied me three times. Before the cock crowed three times, you're going to be denied me thrice. Peter said, I'll never do it. The rest of them said, I'll never do it. But he said, pray that you don't. Pray that you don't backslide. Pray that you don't give up. Pray that you don't be deceived. Pray that you don't fall into this snare that's coming up on the face of the whole earth. Pray. Pray that you be able to stand. I know you're saved, but if you want to keep that salvation, pray. I know that you got saved 10 years ago, 20 years, 40, 50, 60 years ago, but if you want to keep what you got, pray. Pray yes. that you will be counted worthy to escape, to survive, to get through these times. Yeah. Yeah. Didn't he? Yeah. Finish reading that. Okay. What was the next one? Did I? Huh? Well, I got something to say on that one. <laughs> Let's read another one here. Over here in, and, and, and I'm not going to read it, but over there in Ephesians 6, 10 through 18. I'm not going to go into that. He said, put on the, I mean, if we're not going to be here, why he tell us put on the whole arm of God? If we're not going to be here, why are he telling us, uh, Paul is telling us uh, the evil day. That you might be able to stand in that evil day. What evil? The day that we're in right now. Right. Why ain't preachers telling people to prepare themselves because they're blind, leading the blind. 
They crossing their fingers, thinking that we're not going to be here. Go and tell those people in Ukraine that they're not going to be here. Go and tell them Afghanistan they're not going to be here. Go to New York City and tell those people they ain't going to be here. <laughs> Go to Los Angeles and tell those people that, man, they fleeing the city. <laughs> Not because of Brother Terry prophesied, but because of the violence, because of the bloodshed, because the cities are unsafe to raise their children anymore. Even though he did prophesy years ago to get out, but yet, a lot of them, they're fleeing. They're going to Florida. They're going, I don't care why they go. They run from a lion into the claws of a bear. If they don't get saved, then the end is going to meet them wherever they're at. Just moving into a place in the country ain't enough. We've got to move into a place in the Word of God. We've got to abide in Him. His Word abide in us. Out here in these countries, you know, in the country, I, I mean, that gives us a better chance. I'd rather be in the country than in the city when all these shells are empty. When panic hit the cities. Already it's too late for a lot of people. Already inflation is set in. Already if they want to buy a good used vehicle, they want to arm them two legs. Everything right now. Is going up. Yes. Finish reading that. Did I give you a scripture? No. Oh, okay. Let's go to Hebrews 10 and verse 23. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 23. I think I was speaking about Ephesians 6, 10 through 18, but we didn't go into the details on it fully. But Hebrews 10 and 23. Let us hold fast the profession. Let us hold fast. Don't compromise. Don't relax. Don't water it down. Let us hold fast the profession. What is your profession? What is your faith? Holiness. Godliness. The fear of God. Obedience. Truth. Hold fast. Don't Compromise too many. They don't, they don't hold firm to what God brought them in. They have gotten off the foundation. They're not firm. They're not established. They're not rooted. They're not grounded. They have allowed themselves to, to be deceived by smooth mouths. Gotten off the foundation. When? In a time when they need to be rooted. In a time when we need to be establishing ourselves in the word and in faith. People are getting off the foundation looking for something easy. That's right. Don't walk in the fear of God no more. That's true. Don't have truth anymore. Yeah. Don't walk in obedience to God. This is the foundation. Let's read 2 Timothy chapter 4 verse 1 through 5. 2 Timothy chapter 4 verse 1 through 5. I charge thee therefore before God. I charge you before God. And the Lord Jesus Christ. And the Lord Jesus Christ. Who shall judge the quick. Who shall judge the quick of the living. And the dead. And the dead. And his appearing. And his appearance. And his kingdom. And his kingdom. Preach the word. Preach the word. Be instant in season. Not tradition. Not theology. Not some cut up vision that somebody had. But the word. The word is my foundation. The word is a lamp to my feet. The word is a light to my path. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my word shall not pass away. The word was made flesh and dwelt among us. The word is the only thing that Jesus used to rebuke the devil and said, get behind me, because it is written. The word, preach the word. Go ahead. Be instant in season. Instant in season. Out of season. I, I'm going to preach holiness. Yes. That's the word. I'm going to preach godliness. That's the word. I'm going to preach truth. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. I'm going to preach sound doctrine. Yeah. And when he said preach the word, sound. That's, that's what holiness sound. People not sound in the way they live anymore. They live loose, live crooked, live any kind of way. God said, be sound. 
Be firm. Be solid. Don't let nobody come and prophesy some old smooth stuff to you and tell you it don't take all of that. Sam, I don't care if there is a hop of grace gospel. Don't you go by that old hop of grace stuff. You stay sound in the word. I don't care if there is uh, people telling you about all these other different doctrines of devils. This, this inclusiveness. I don't stay with sound. I don't need nothing. I don't need something that'll change. What are you telling people? Even the devil is going to be saved when it's all over with. See, doctrines of devils. Go ahead, finish that. Reprove. Reprove. Rebuke. Rebuke. Exhort with all long suffering. Exhort with all long suffering. And doctrine. You know, I didn't mean no harm when I was telling that person last night. You know, I said, look, you're among these young people. And, uh, I don't want you uh, wearing no necklace in here, young man. Just hide it or take it off. Yeah. And he hid it. And when he got to testify, he brought it back out. We're about to go see it. I said, right in the middle of that testimony, I said, uh -uh. I told you not to do that. So you were not going to bring that kind of spirit in this church. That's right. That's right. See, he said, repute. He said, repute. There's too many young men out there switching. Yes. Come on. Too many young ladies out there taking on a, a spirit of masculinity. Yes. We need sound doctrine. Yes. Something that we don't deviate from. Something that's solid. Something that the Bible backs it up. The spirit by witness. The spirit and the word agrees. Yes. yes. Don't believe every spirit, but try. If it lines up with Paul's gospel, then believe it. But if it don't, then don't you accept it. Sound doctrine. Yes. Do anything that goes astray from sound doctrine. We in the day now, we have to preach the word. Yes. We have to be yes. instant, yes. in season, out of season. Reprove, reprove, reprove. When he, the Holy yes. Ghost has come, he will reprove yes. the world because of sin. Yes. Yes. Righteous, judgment. I know this kind of preacher, people that he's just mad all the time. I'm not mad. No. I'm just being firm. Yes. 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 I'm not in a joke telling spirit right now. Yes. Wasn't yesterday, wasn't that last week, last month, last year either. Right. I'm not in the spirit of cracking jokes, trying to, you know, make people laugh. Yeah. Man, the ministry that I've been drawn up under says, weep, howl, cry. Fast, pray, get in sackcloth. Yes. Repent, turn back to God. This is the word that's going to help us to get established and get rooted and get grounded. Yes. Finish reading that. For well, the time will come. The time will come. They will not endure sound doctrine. They will not endure sound doctrine. But after their own lust. After their own desires, lust. So they heaped them themselves. Look how they heaped themselves in the nineties. All these charismatic churches. 480 of them grew up, just sprung up in the nineties. Eighties and in the nineties. 480 of them. Big mega churches. They heaped to themselves what they flesh wanted. Yeah. Go ahead. They heaped to themselves teachers having itching ears. Teachers having itching ears. Teachers, tell me what I want to hear. I don't want to hear what God says. Tell me what I want to hear. Tell me I'm going to prosper. Tell me, you know, this is my season. Tell me that this is the year I'm going to get a telephone call that's, that I'm going to get a million dollars. Come on, tell me something I want to hear. That's what's going on out there. Go ahead. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth. Turn away their ears from the truth. Turn away the ear from holiness, from cleanly, pure, God living, and shall be turned into fables. Man, this the only reason I keep this on because I have to have it for emergencies and other things. Y'all excuse this. This is um, just an, um, one of those reminder calls about something that is not 
It's a, it's a recording. That's what it is. But just hang it up. Y'all excuse me for that, because I, I preach against these cell phones coming into church. They're God. Good old God. Take it. We need. We don't need to hear these things coming on. But like I said, I just keep that one on because of a certain situation. But I, I'm not making excuses. I was. I forgot to turn it off. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to say. Go ahead, go ahead, finish reading that. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth. They shall turn away their ears. That's what, man, I, 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 I never thought preachers would, would, would backslide, not backslide, but would, you know, draw back from the truth. Yeah. yeah. Turn away their ears from the truth. Uh-huh. And shall be turned The away. truth is in Jesus. Amen. Sound, preach the word. Preach sound doctrine. Preach the truth. Yes. Reality. Preach what's real. Truth is reality. Truth is what's real. Don't preach Bible. Don't fables. Don't preach lies. Don't preach theology. Don't preach ideas. Preach the truth. Yes. Jesus said, I'm the truth. I'm the way. I'm the life. Yes. We have to give people the truth. What's real? What's been proven? What's been tested? What have rebuked the devil? What have stood through the test of time? Preach what Paul preached. Yes. What shall not prophesy? What Jesus brought to us. Yes. Go ahead. And shall be turned unto fables. Turn to fables. But watch. Watch. Thou in all things. Uh huh. Endure afflictions. Endure afflictions. Do the work of an evangelist. See, that's what we. That's what's going to cause a lot of people, millions, to take the mark of the beast. They're not going to endure affliction because they have not prepared themselves. Because preachers didn't tell them they were going to have to suffer. Didn't tell them they were going to have to go through anything. That's why they didn't endure. And that's why they're going to uh, betray one another because they can't endure hardship. Can't endure. Person, you know, I was reading, I don't know, maybe 3 o'clock this morning or something. I was reading about how that Daniel, you know, stood for God and believed that God was actually going to deliver him mm. out of the lounge there. You know, if he prayed and if he sought God, that God would deliver him from the lounge then. Did God hear that prayer? Huh? Yes. No. Mm -hmm. God didn't deliver him from the lounge then. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. God had them, had them actually allowed them to throw him into the lounge then. Yes. He right. wasn't from, I mean, he, he had to go in it. In the furnace, I have called you out of the furnace of affliction. We're fixing to go through a furnace of affliction. It was in the lounge then. When the king had that big old stone seal out there, they threw Daniel in it with all them lounge and then had that stone sealed. Where nobody could get in there and, and unseal it until the morning. And all night long, Daniel was kept in the lounge then. The next day, the king said, Are you, Daniel, are you still alive? You holy man of God? Daniel says, Live forever, king. <laughs> the God of heaven has sent his angel and has locked the lounge of Job. See, in the lounge then. God didn't deliver Job from all that he went through. Job said, Though he slay me, I'm going to trust it. He didn't deliver Job from all of that. He saw, he stood back and said, Satan is in your hand, but Satan is lying. But and, and the devil threw everything he could at Job. But Job stayed faithful. Yeah. Uh, even the Job's wife said, Won't you trust God by the stinking? You got them swords all over you, you got them maggots all in your body. Look at you. Nobody wants you. Don't you come within a mile close to me. Curse God and die. Jesus. Daniel says, you talk like, uh, Job says, you talk like a foolish. He didn't deliver Job.
from those things. He delivered Job right in the middle. Yes. Right. Yes. All right. He said, we got to go through. We got to endure affliction. Yes. Endure hardness. Yes. Many of us will have to, have to give our lives. Many of us will have to press, have to suffer. This is what preachers, they tell the people, they tell, oh, don't you worry about it. No, we've got to get something so we can endure hardship, so we can go through these things. And even though if, if our prayers are never answered, I'm not going to deny oh, God. Yes. If I never get another answer from God, I'm going to still stand on what His Word says. Yes, yes. Lord Jesus. We've been given too much banana pudding. Not enough steak. We get some steak. Endure. Get something from God so you can stand, so you can be rooted, so you can be grounded, so you can be solid. Quit looking for everything to come on a smooth, smooth to you. Everything ain't gonna come smooth. We're now in the day. Every man's work going to be tried as by fire. If you ain't praying, you're going to throw your hands up. If you've not been seeking God, you've not been rooting yourself in the Word, you will deny Him. You will betray Him. You will not be caught out. You're not going to be routed out. We've got to go through these things. I know people don't like this. Right. Jesus. That's why Paul said, be rooted, be grounded, be settled, get established. May say, what you gonna do? Shadrach, you know I'm not gonna stand up. What about you, Benigo? I'm I am too. Yeah. And they all stood up. God didn't deliver them. Can I read a little bit of that before we close? Let's read just a little bit of that. Chapter 3 of Daniel. Just a few minutes. Sorry. Just a few moments. Let's read a little bit of it. I believe it's in Daniel. Chapter 3. Verse, maybe it started. Verse 6. Well, chapter 3. I think verse 16. Start in verse 16. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king. O Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar. We are not careful to answer thee in this matter. Uh-huh. If it be so. If it be so. Our God. Our God. Whom we serve. Whom we serve. Is able to deliver us. God going to deliver us. We ain't worried about all these things. God gonna deliver us from, huh? from the burning fire. God gonna deliver us. God ain't gonna let me go through nothing. I'm one of His sons. I'm one of His daughters. God ain't gonna let you go through nothing. God is able. And God can deliver us from these things. Finish reading that. And He will deliver us out of thine hand, O King. Wait a minute. Back up a little bit. If it be so, if it be so, our God, our God, whom we serve, whom we serve is, able to, is able to deliver us. See, they believed God was going to deliver them. They believed God was not going to permit them to be put in a fiery furnace. They, they didn't believe God was going to go through with it. We're going to step back and allow it to happen. Go ahead. To deliver us from the burning fiery furnace. He's gonna deliver us. Ain't no way God gonna let y'all go through nothing. He gonna deliver y'all. Y'all chosen. Y'all precious. Don't you think of God ain't gonna let y'all suffer and go through nothing? Look at you. You got halos. You got wings. I don't see no pig points. I don't see no tail. I see angels here. <laughs> God gonna let us. Glide through this thing. Uh -uh. He ain't gonna let us go through nothing. Uh-uh. He's gonna let that spider come down on us. What spider? Uh -uh. There ain't no spider. Uh -uh. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead. And he will deliver us out of your hand, O king. 
He will deliver us out of your hands, O King. But if not, but uh oh, how many of us can get to that point? But if not, be it, uh, be it known unto thee. But if not, will you die for me? If not, will you suffer for me? If I don't deliver you, will you allow me to have them to afflict you? If I don't, see, this is the other side that people very, very seldom look at. What if God permit us to shed blood for him? What if God permit us to go to prison for him? What if God permit us to, to be tortured for him? Huh? As our faith comes to the place where it's rooted, is established, where God permit these things to happen, Go ahead. But if not, but if not, be it known unto thee, be it known unto thee, O King, O King, that we will not serve thy God. We ain't gonna serve your God. Nor worship the golden image. We're not gonna backslide. We're not gonna water down this word. We're not gonna compromise. We're gonna be steadfast, unmovable. Yeah. Go ahead. We will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. Yes. Then was Nebuchadnezzar full of fury. Then was Nebuchadnezzar full of fury. And the form of his visage was changed against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He was full of fury. And the form of his visage just changed. Now look at me. Look like, hold your hand up, Brother Beard. Look up, look up here at me. Look at Brother Beard. Look back at Brother Beard. See, see, the form of his face changed from being, you know, uh, this color to that color. Just turned red. <laughs> Until, I mean, he just, everything, he just mad, upset. Go ahead. Therefore he spake and commanded. He spake and commanded. That they should heat the furnace one second. Heat the furnace. What? One seven times more. Seven times higher. Than it was one to be. That's the temperature of hell. Seven times higher. Heat it. The same temperature there is in a lake of fire. Uh-huh. And he commanded the most mighty man. Commanded the most mighty man. That were in his army. That was in his army. To bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. See, it's fixing to happen again. In our generation. In our time. Everything, the foundation is being laid. We're right now at the birth pains of, of what they went through. We're at the birth pains. It's fixing to happen again. Uh-huh. And to cast them into the burning. Cast them into the burning. Fiery furnace. Fiery furnace. Ain't no way King going to do that to us. We favors. We his pets. Ain't no way he's going to let us be cast into the fire. Go ahead. Then these men were bound in their coats. They bound them in their coats. I still say it ain't going to happen. Uh -huh. Their hosen and their hats. Their hats. And their other garments. Their other garments. And were cast into the midst See, of the burning fire. And they going to do it. But it happened, didn't it? Yeah. It happened. Yeah. God cast them in. He allowed, he allowed them to be thrown into the fire. That's what I'm telling you. Why we need to be rooted, grounded. God's going to allow us to be tried. He's going to allow us to be cast into the great tribulation. He's going to allow our faith to be tested. He's going to allow you to go through things. Yeah. Your mind. My Lord Jesus. That's what happened to um, back in the uh, days when um, Russia, not Russia, but communism was taking over this country. When they was taking this country over, there was one man, uh, I, I read about him 40 some years ago, uh, tortured for his faith. I can't think, in, in a Roman, Romania prison, tortured. Huh? Dimitri Dutton. Dimitri was that his name? Okay, tortured for his faith. Talking about he couldn't move. He had to stand in a corner. He couldn't go to the bathroom. And if he peed on himself, they tortured him. 
He had to tip, stand tiptoe in the field. They had to have their torture. And he went through hell for 20 years. 20 years of going through all this insanity. A lot of them men, they lost their mind because they was play all that, uh, play all that, uh, all that uh, propaganda. And day and night, day and night, day and night, and preachers just snapped. They lost their mind. They couldn't take it. Mental torture. See, it's just more than just physical. It's going to be mental pain, mental torture. That's why he said, have the mind of Christ. Right. Yeah. And they snapped. But they asked this man after 20 years, and then they released him. After they released him, they asked him, how did you survive? How did you? He said, I memorized the word. He said, I memorized the Bible. And I read it in my mind. I meditated in my mind. That word that I hid in my heart, it kept me from sinning. From backside, kept my mind from going, from snapping. It kept me from going crazy. See, he redeemed the time by putting the word in it. He didn't waste his time in, on, in Facebook. He didn't waste his time in foolishness. He didn't waste his time by all this other stuff. But he redeemed the time. He, he equipped himself. He prepared himself. He allowed that word to be established and rooted and grounded and settled. That's what it's going to have to take. This is what Paul is warning and telling the Christians. Yes, yes. 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 Well, it's too heavy on y'all. No. I ain't meant for it to be too heavy. He said, but this is how I survived. I memorized the Bible. And every time they tortured me, and every time they played that propaganda, and they played it day and night, day and night, day and night, day and night, preachers just snapped. But he said, the word, when they would play that, I just quote the scriptures that I had memorized. That kept me for 20 years. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Did we finish? I'll, I'll stop right here. I think. What verse is it? Huh? What did I say go to? Well, we'll stop right there. Let's stand on our feet, please. We got a whole lot more of this, but I think we got the message. I hope we do. We're not going to make it. We're just, these are weak sermons. We're not going to make it. With all this uh, traditional and theological and all this giving people what their flesh wants. We've got to have this kind of word yes, yes. to wake us up got to have this kind of word, thank you, to keep us on a straight and narrow path. Anyone else want to bring something up here? I'm not going to, thank you. One thing I'm not going to do is compromise. Like I said, I know this is not a, I told you at the beginning it wasn't going to be easy. But when the reality of it says, how you doing? Good to see you again. Amen. Okay. Anyone else? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. But I got some good news in this here, too. Believe it. So I got some good news in here, too. Thank you. I'll meet you, Sister Cookie. Thank you, Jesus. God, you have mercy. 
and bless our sister. In Jesus' name. Okay, thank you. God, give her that health, that restoration. Touch her bones, touch her muscles, touch her nerves, touch her heart, touch God this upper respiratory. Give her complete healing from the top of her head down to the sole of her feet. God, this word not only keeps us through these hardships and afflictions, but it keeps us in our sicknesses. It keeps us, God, when our bodies has gone through the meal, let your word send it to bring health and strength by the power and save our children, save our husband, save his grandchildren. God, down to the third and fourth generation, strengthen and have mercy upon my sister. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Huh? Have a burden for you this morning. It's praying God strengthen her. God touch her physical body. Give her health and strength. And touch her sister. Give her sister that healing that she needs. Of the power of God. Of the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And our mother, Lord, touch. Touch. Touch and strengthen. Touch and strengthen. Have mercy. Been through it, haven't you? God, have mercy upon her physical body. Oh, her body just wearing down. She struggles. Some days she just don't know how she makes it. But God, give her that health. You promise not just to heal, but this is your will that would prosper and be in health. God, give her that health in her physical body. Jesus, take this infirmity out of her body. Heal her. God that will fit to the body in Jesus name yes, Jesus. touch strengthen all of her children grandchildren keep them all God in the solid word of God and set of your will touch those that have gotten off the foundation and get them back on the right foundation in Jesus name in Jesus name thank you Lord Anything in particular that you need prayer for? There's no one of your sons you're raising up. What's his name? Huh? Yeah, I remember. I just can't remember your name. What's your name? Nathaniel. That's right. God, you bless Nathaniel. In Jesus' name, keep him. Put your protection upon his life. Lord, upon this other grandson's life. Keep them precious grandchildren. Lord, when they grow up, you probably be didn't come by then. The They'll probably be the generation that see Jesus coming in the clouds. Would you like to see Jesus coming back in the clouds? Huh? Well, you'll probably be here. Well, I got some bad news for you, too. You probably be here with the Antichrist here, too. But Jesus is going to keep y'all. You live for him, he'll keep you. You listen to him. Huh? Look at me. Look at me. <laughs> he finally he thumbs up everything, but y'all get it. Yeah, that's that oil. God keep and protect him. Huh? Jeremiah. Yeah, pray for him up there. Yeah, I pray for Jeremiah in New York up there. <laughs> I pray for God to break that yoke on from him, to deliver him from that, you know. In Jesus' name, you keep her and protect her. Stir her up, God. 
You see this thing that's just constantly reoccurring in her physical body. God, lift her above this affliction. Jesus is touching, strengthening her husband and her daughters over here. Keep them by the power of your spirit and her sister. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. God, you keep and protect and watch over her. God, help her and keep her. Oh, Father, by the power of the name of Jesus, thank you, Lord, for bringing her into a safe place. Lord, away from the hustle and bustle of the city. Lord, these cities have become the inhabitations of every foul and unclean and hateful bird. But God, bring your people into a, a place of refuge and safety in Jesus' name. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Give her the help that she needs. Give her the strength that she needs, both mentally and physically, by the power of the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Father. 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 In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Was it? Okay, you need a prayer. Folks, I want to pray for you for a minute. What grade are y'all in there? You're seeing. Okay. You're going to be a sophomore. God protect these girls. Senior and sophomore. Keep them going in school. Come on, the bad influences. All these spirits that are trying to corrupt this young generation that you promised you pour your spirit upon, that they would prophesy. God, keep them by the power of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. You need prayer. God, give them strength. Put them on a solid foundation. Give them understanding. God, let them begin to blossom and grow in the knowledge of your word. In spiritual depths, God, bring them in a place where his spiritual life will take a transformation. In Jesus' name, grant it to be so. Grant it to be so. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. God, move for his daughter. Move for his son-in-law. Move in their home. The children, lift up a standard for all of them. And God, give him protection and strength against this birth pains that's out there coming like a dragon against this generation. Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Listen. Brother James will lead us in prayer for a few minutes. Anyone else? Special prayer. Won't lead us in prayer for a few minutes. Thank you, Jesus. Let's bow our heads, saints. Father, in the name of Jesus. We'll be back tonight. So Lord, we thank you for this word tonight. Seven o'clock tonight. Thank you. Thank you for this word this morning, Lord. Lord, help us, Lord. Give us eyes to see. Lord, it is to hear, Lord. What the Spirit is speaking to us this morning. Lord, you said we're going to have to be rooted and grounded and established in the faith. Lord, you said that America is experiencing these birth pains. She's about to give birth to troubled times. Jesus, and we're going to have to go through these troubled times, Lord. 
God, help us, Lord. You said all that the prophets have spoken, Lord, is about to happen in our time. You said this is the last generation. This is the generation in whom the end of the world has come upon. God, and we're here, Lord. You said you're not going to rapture us out. Lord, we ain't going to be snuck away. But Lord, you said out of the furnace of affliction, you're going to choose a people. Lord, we want to be kept. God, we want to be sustained and preserved. Lord, when these times begin to happen. Lord, you said there's going to be wars and rumors of wars. You said there's going to be pestilence and diseases. God, you said there's going to be earthquakes and famines. Lord, all these things are happening already. You said that these are the beginning of sorrows. Lord, you said, see that we be not troubled, for the end is not yet. God, help us, Lord. Have mercy upon the people. Lord, help us. You said that in order for us to be rooted and grounded, God, we don't have to pray. Lord, we don't have to endure until the end. Lord, we're going to have to keep your word. We're going to have to abide in your word. Lord, as Peter, you told him to pray. That he entered and out of the temptation. Lord, he didn't pray. He said he wasn't going to betray you. He said he wasn't going to turn against you. Lord, he said he wasn't going to deny you. Well, Lord, you knew that he didn't pray. And because he didn't pray, Lord, he betrayed you. He turned on you. He denied you, Lord. God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I know this happened for our example. To let us know that we don't pray and we're not going to be kept. Lord, that we don't pray and we're not going to be rooted. God, that we don't pray and we're not going to be grounded. That we don't pray and we're not going to be established in your word. Lord, I got to pray. Help me to pray. You said not to be walking in darkness. Not to let our hearts be overcharged with suffering and drunkenness. And cares of this life. But you told us to watch and pray. That we might be counted worthy to survive. That we might be counted worthy to escape. Lord, all these things that should come to pass. Jesus, have mercy upon my soul. Lord, and help me, Lord, to pray. And pray and pray and pray. How did I be kept? Lord, to put on the whole arm of God. That I be able to stand in the evil day. To hold fast my profession. Lord, to walk in the, according to the word. To walk in obedience. Lord, to walk. God, not to compromise. Not to take that out. You said not to relax. You said we are children of the day and not of the night. The day and the thief is going to come among those that are not aware. That are those that are not praying. Those that are not putting on the whole armor. Lord, help me to put on the Lord Jesus. Make not provision for the flesh. But Lord, to pray and keep myself sober. Lord, to keep myself awakened. You said, awaken out of the sleepers and rise from the dead. Christ shall give us light. Lord, help us to walk circumspectly. Help us to be sober. And to take this word and 